difficult airway. The American Society of Anesthesiology defines difficult airway as the clinical situation in which a conventionally trained anesthesiologist experiences difficulty with ventilation of upper airway by marks, difficulty with tracheal intubation or both, and provides guidelines for the evaluation of airway and preparation for difficult airway management, including difficult airway algorithm intended to guide clinicians' decision making when an anesthesiologist is faced with a known or potentially difficult airway. American Society of Anesthesiologists Difficult Airway Algorithm begins with consideration of relative clinical merits and feasibility of four basic management traits Awake intubation versus intubation after induction, non invasive versus invasive techniques, video assisted laryngoscopy as initial approach to intubation, preservation and ablation of spontaneous ventilation. ASA Difficult Airway Algorithm Assess the likelihood and clinical impact of basic management problems, actively pursue opportunity to deliver supplemental oxygen throughout the process of difficult airway management, consider the relative merits and feasibility of basic management choice, develop primary and alternative strategies under which can be awake intubation or intubation after induction of general anesthesia. Awake intubation can be done by means of a non-invasive intubation or invasive airway access. Fiber optic intubation is one of the many modalities by means of which we secure the airway in case of difficult airway. Parts of fiber optic bronchoscope. There are three main, namely the handle, insertion tube, and flexible tip. An idle fiber optic bronchoscope card should be comprised of light source, video monitor, endoscopy marks, bronchoscopy swivel adapter, oral intubating airway, bite blocks, atomizer, tongue blades, cotton tip swab, gauze, soft nasal airways, local anesthetics, along with which a difficult airway card should contain a video laryngoscope and a screen, supraglottic airway devices, ET tubes, introducer and exchanger, and percutaneous airway res rescue exit. 54-year-old male patient, a case of uh, carcinoma mandibular arch, who was planned for white local excision with bilateral modified radical neck dissection with free fibular flap repair. On preoperative assessment, patient had a mouth opening of less than one finger, malumpati grade was not accessible, neck movement was within normal limit. Patient preparation Injection glycopyrrolate 0.2 mg intramuscular 15 minutes prior to procedure was given. Following which, monitors in form of SpO2 probe, uh, non invasive uh, blood pressure cuff, and ECG electrodes were attached. And take the note of the baseline vital recordings. Patient is nebulized with 2 person lidocaine, following which Oxymethazoline nasal drop was given. Taking proper aseptic and antiseptic precautions, cleaning of parts was done with the spirit saw gauze piece and superior laryngeal nerve block was given with injection lignocaine adrenaline 3 ml each on either side with the landmark as the greater cornu of the hyoid bone. A topical lidocaine in form of 10% uh, lidocaine spray is sprayed into the oral cavity ensuring that it anesthetizes the oropharynx. After having cleaned the area, now we give transtracheal block by injection lidocaine 4% where we locate cricothyroid area through anterior collar opening and mark the area. Straddle the trachea with two fingers of the non-dominant non hand well, with the dominant hand, we direct 10 ml syringe containing 4 ml of 4% lidocaine attached to 21 or 22 gauze needle. Ask the patient to take deep breath in gently and exhale gently but maximally. One exhalation is at its completion. Rapidly inject the anesthetic as the anesthetic, as the anesthetic tear the trachea. The patient may cough, but because exhalation has taken place, a quick breath must be taken to inhale any more cough and thus will help spread the anesthetic.
about the pre-selected endotracheal tube which is usually about 1 to 1.5 uh, times smaller than the expected endotracheal tube size to be used in normal intubation by direct laryngoscopy. Lubricate the fiber optic scope with lignocaine jelly, ensuring that the jelly does not reach the tip of the scope, which may lead to blurring of the vision. Lever movements of fiber optic bronchoscope. Moving the lever down moves the tip up, and moving the lever up moves the tip down. Side to side movement is accomplished by rotation of the body of bronchoscope. In cases of non visualization or difficult visualization of vocal cord by fiber optic bronchoscope, the glottic structure can be visualized by tongue pull and jaw thrust. Successive direction for fiber optic guidance in case of fiber optic orotracheal intubation. Downward to the posterior wall of the oropharynx or nasopharynx. Upward to the anterior commissure of the vocal cord and downward again to the laryngeal and tracheal lumen to the carina. Once the fiber optic bronchoscope is into the trachea, we keep fiber optic bronchoscope just above the carina and railroad the preloaded endotracheal tube and advance it up to about two to three tracheal rings above the carina. Following which Bilateral layer entry was confirmed by auscultation and ETCO2 tracing after which tube fixation was done.